see why we need a variable right first of all why we are executing a program we are executing a program or we are developing a program to process the data or information right for example if you uh, if i uh, just look at my screen so here i am creating some variable integer x equals to 10 i'm creating some variable integer y equals to 20 i'm creating some uh, original kind of variable and i'm here writing x plus y and here i'm printing the value of the result right so if you look at this so so when i'm executing this program right so what exactly i'm doing so i'm processing some data or i'm processing some information what is the data here the data is 10 the data is 20 and or the information is i'm adding this two data and i'm having some information and i'm displaying those information in the output screen that means why we are executing a program or why we are developing a program means to process some information to process some data right if you take an example of a bank application right then what they are doing they are processing some program or not they are executing a transaction so while they are executing a transaction means they are accessing some data or they are accessing some information what data and what information they are accessing suppose you are doing one online uh, net banking right so they will access your uh, account number they will access your name they will access your uh, account balance right if you are uh, sending some amount then they will deduct the amount from your uh, balance right and they will add that amount to the destination uh, account holder right so this is nothing some uh, processing some information they are processing right so that means if you are developing an application means to do some kind of a processing what we are processing here we are processing data or information right and in order to process the data and the information we need to store those data and the information somewhere in the memory or not for example if i am running this application so this data 10 and 20 and result should be stored somewhere in the ram or not yes it, it should be stored in the ram memory right if you look at my task manager right so currently uh, 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 one of my application is executing right what is the name yeah you can say types of variables so this is the application this application is currently in my ram or not okay just see me this is the memory this memory is not your hard disk right this is your ram this is your cpu the cpu is accessing the console application or not what we have developed and while it is accessing whatever variables or whatever uh, information or whatever data you want to store those data are going to be stored in this ram memory only and how long it will be there as long as the application is running right so you can see this is visual store this is your program file and this is your data file data file is actually contain your data and information but if you want to run this data file you need the program file right so now now let's see if i stop this application then you will see that the data file is not be there right the ex is not there that means whatever the ram or is allocated whatever the memory is allocated for your console application that will be gone right so as long as your application start executing and as long as the application is uh, running you can see the data and the memory is there right so if you can access the application and the data or information will be stored in the ram memory is that clear yes yes or no yes sir okay right so see, that that means whenever we are processing the data or information or whenever we are executing our application right i'm saying executing not before the execution not after the execution right while the program is running the data or information must be stored some location or not and we call that location as memory location or not and every computer has memory location right right if you take any kind of a, a memo, a application whether it is a mobile application whether it is a, a desktop or whether it is a laptop so every uh, device having the ram or not right why it is ram is required ram is the running memory right running uh, running memory means what now whenever you are running some application at that time whatever the data and the information is required to run the application those data and the information are going to store in your RAM memory, right? 
so this is the one and every uh, computer or every <coughs> mobile application or every device having the ram ram right without ram you cannot run anything right but every ram right every memory location is identified by an address right if you uh, uh, look at this example consider it, this is the ram memory and you can see uh, in this ram memory there are a lot of a memory location right and each and every memory location is identified by an address you can consider this is one memory location identified by 128 this is another memory location 572 this is another memory location 1024 this is another memory location 5098 so these are nothing but the memory location right so you, you can consider uh, right so uh, and you need to consider each memory location as a positive integer number right so so you understand or not what yes, is sir. the uh, memory location now now if you compare this with the real time example right so you can compare this memory location with the seating arrangement of a uh, theater right so if you going to any theater right any, any movie hall then every uh, seat having some uh, uh, unique number or not Yes or no? Yes. yes. So similarly, if you go into memory location, then every memory location having some unique number or unique address. 128, you can find only once. 572, you will find only once, right? So this is nothing but your memory locations, right? Or you can say memory addresses, right? So each memory location having a positive integer memory address now. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now, uh, now you understand that uh, we have RAM memory and whenever we are running the application, whatever the data and information required for the application, those data and the information are going to be stored in the RAM memory and inside the RAM memory, there are a memory location and, in, uh, and each memory location having some unique addresses and in that particular memory location, we are going to store the data. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now observe. Suppose you want to store uh, 10, 10 is a data, right? 20 is a data, 30 is a data. And if you are doing some uh, uh, calculation, 10 plus 10, whatever the result you are getting, that is also data. That means if you want to store, then data is going to store inside the memory location, right? Suppose you want to store 10 and 10 is stored here and the memory location or memory address is 572. Now, now suppose you want to access this data, then how you will access it? Because we do not know, computer do not know at what, uh, uh, we do not know at what memory location the data is going to store because this data is randomly, this address are randomly and it will store the data randomly at any particular location. Then we cannot identify at what location that value 10 is going to be stored. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Right? See, uh, if you want to access this value 10 and uh, you are accessing this value 10 or, or any any purpose, you just need to print the value or you need to use that value for some uh, arithmetic operations, what, whatever may be the uh, purpose, right? So if you want to access the data and let's say our main uh, intention is to print the data, then how we can print this? How we can print this means we will face the problem because we do not know in which memory location, in which memory address, this data has been stored. Why we cannot identify? Because this 10 is stored randomly. While we are writing the program, are we specifying that this data is going to store in into this memory location, into this memory address? We are not specifying that. So whenever we are storing the data, the data is going to store randomly to any particular memory location, right? So we cannot identify or we cannot say that this data is going to store in 572 of memory address or it's going to store into 5098 memory address. We cannot identify this. The data is going to store randomly at any particular memory location. Right? Right. So, so, so here accessing the memory location becomes very difficult after storing the information. So what we should do before storing the information, we need to set the identity to the memory location. Right? What we need to do, we need to set the identity to the memory location. So to this memory location, if we set one identity, yeah, this memory location identity is A, right? Then later, if we want to access, 
we can access it easily or not let's see how right so that means we need to set one identity to the memory location where we are going to store the data so that we can easily retrieve the data from that uh, location see if you want to set the identity to the memory location then you need to use the concept called variable right if you want to set the identity to the memory location then you need to use the concept called variable how to set the identity you need to use the concept called data type and identifier for example integer a here int is the data type and identifier a is the identifier it can be any name right here we set it as a but you can set it any name right so see now now observe suppose uh, i am creating one identity integer a you can see i am creating one identity integer a it means what now it will allocate uh, it will occupy four bytes of memory in the computer ram and it will provide that address identity as a you understood or not so this memory location size is four bytes because here we are creating integer a now a is nothing but an identity or identifier you can say given to a particular memory location in this case we are giving a to a particular memory location whose address is 10344 and we can identify or we can identify this memory location as a and what is the size of this memory location as integer is four bytes this memory location is going to be four bytes is that clear yes sir see now whenever we are creating integer a it doesn't mean it will create or occupy the memory in this particular location it can be any location it can be here it can be here it can be here but we are not worried about the memory location we are worried about the identity name what is the identifier or oh, what is the identifier we provided we are interested only for that here we are providing the identifier as a so we are only going to be interested in identifier a now suppose you store a uh, suppose you store a value 10 in the uh, variable a then what will happen now integer a so what he will do he will uh, occupy a memory location or a memory address uh, which size is four bytes and provide the identity as a now uh, if you are storing into a equals stone then what he will do he will take this 10 value and put into that memory location which is identified by the identifier a is that clear yes sir. right in theater every sitting uh, every city has having some unique number and he when you are coming will you will sit in a particular seat right that is allocated to you later if they want to access it they can easily access it right now as we set this memory location as a so whenever we want to access the value so what we will do is we will tell the compiler hey compiler whatever the value stored in this identity just give to us so compiler now will go and check where is that identifier a is and if the identifier a uh, is this location then what is the value is there 10 so he will retrieve the value 10 and he will give it to you now if a is not there then how he will identify because the 10 value is here 10 value might be here also 10 value might be here also right we do not know na, at what memory location so we cannot uh, if you do not know the identifier then how we can uh, 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 how we can test the value because of this variable concept are given to us now now if you look at the definition then you will understand it very clearly uh, what is a variable a variable is a name that is given to any computer memory location right so variable is nothing but a named memory location you can say in many textbook you might be heard that word variables are nothing but named memory location what it means now it is nothing but a name given to a memory location so as you can see this is one memory location memory address is 1344 but what is the name of this memory location is a this a is nothing but a variable is that clear yes sir now now if you want to store the data now if you want to paste the data then you are not interested in what is the address or memory address you are only interested in the name of the memory location what is a so using a we can store the value we can modify the value and we can paste the value and this is the use and beautifulness of the concept called 
variable. Is that clear? Why exactly we need variable? If anybody having any doubt, uh, ask me now. Any any question from anyone? No, sir. No. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, ask me. No question? Okay, fine. Right. Now, uh, now uh, some of the basic things uh, which you should know for actually start working with variable. So what is the role for variable declaration? So these are the uh, theory I have written. A variable name must begin with a letter or underscore. Variable in C are case sensitive. They cannot be constructor with digits and letters. No special symbols are allowed other than underscore. Some height, these are some of the examples, right? So variable can start with underscore right it is acceptable right a uh, variable cannot start with the digits uh, cannot start with the digits but it can be uh, digit can be start with after the end right only special character underscore is allowed you cannot use any other special characters right so these are the uh, some of the rules that you need to follow while creating the variables right now the second question how to declare a variable so the same thing so you need to follow this data type followed by the variable name or identifier name example integer is here int is the data type and s is the name of the variable or you can say identifier name right then how to initialize a variable you can initialize the variable at the time of a declaration or even if you want you can split the declaration and initialization into two parts for example Okay, let me, so here I'm declaring like this. Even if you want, then you can also split the declaration part uh, and initialization part separately. So this is nothing but variable declaration and this is nothing but variable initialization. You can also do this, right? Now, yeah, yeah, ask me. So like, what is the difference between this variable and identifier? Sorry? Like both are, what is the difference between variable and identifier like both are same or yeah yeah see variable is nothing but uh, a named memory location and variable and identifier means same right identifier yeah. means some name right identify yeah. uh, by using which we can identify right if you are creating a function function name is nothing but one identifier right if you are using a class that class name is also an identifier if you are creating a variable that variable name is nothing but an identifier which identifier where this variable is going to be stored, right? So this is yeah. nothing but identifier means we are identifying something. It might be a variable, it might be a function, it might be a class. In this case, it's a variable. Understood? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So variable scope and lifetime. Variable scope and lifetime means whenever when when we created a variable, how long this variable will be there in the memory, right? This is nothing but the lifetime of a variable. And scope means once you create a variable from where we can access it, right? That will be defined by the scope of the variable. As we have different types of variables, the scope and the lifetime is also going to be vary. If we, uh, uh, you can see, we can declare four types of variables in CHR, right? One is non-static or static variable, or uh, non-static or instance variable. Then we have something called static variables. We have something called constant variable, and we have something called a read only variable. Right. Whenever you create a static variable, its scope and lifetime is different. Whenever you create a static variable, its scope and lifetime is different. Whenever you create a const variable, its scope and lifetime is also going to be different. Similarly, in the case of a readable variable. So today's main agenda is we are going to discuss these four types of variables and what is their lifetime and scope. And going further in our upcoming sessions, we will use this concept. We'll use in what scenario, how we are going to use this. But today, you can consider it is just an introduction to the variable concept. But I hope whatever the interview questions and what are the concept uh, behind this uh, variables, you will be clear, right? So let's start with this two one, non-static and static, right? Okay. Let me directly un make you understand the concept using example. See. First thing is when you create a variable using the static modifier, then it is called a static variable. Rest of all are non-static variable. So in this case, you can see I have created, right? 
in this case you can see i have created this x variable using the static modifier that means it is a static variable here i am created uh, this y as a, uh, without using the static modifier means it is a non static variable so what is the definition of starting and non static if you are you create a variable using the static modifier then it is called a static variable rest of all are non static variable further if you declare a variable inside a static block then by default it is going to be static and if you declare a variable inside a non static block then it is going to be a non static variable for example let me public uh, void public static some block right so this is one block right this is another block so integer a and here i'm declaring integer p right so some block two and this is some block one see here i have two block right so you can see here i have two block and this is a static block and this is a non static block if you declare any variable inside a static block so it is going to be static by default no need to use the static modifier and if you declare a variable inside a non static block by default it is going to be non static right is that clear or not what is a static variable what is a non static variable later yes, we when uh, the static variable is created how we are going to access the static variable and non static variable that we will discuss but to have a very good understanding what is a static variable and what is a non static variable so the definition if you are created a variable using the static modifier then it is going to be a static variable the rest of all are non static variable further if you declare a variable inside a static block by default it is going to be a static variable and if you declare a non static if you declare a variable inside a non static block then it is going to be a non static variable by default is that clear the definition yes sir okay <clears throat> see so you, you can see this example okay see uh, here we have declared the variable x as static so it is a static variable y is a non static variable and z is a static variable right so you can see here z is also going to be a static variable can anybody tell me why z is static because the like method is declared as static because, because main method is itself as static because main method is itself as static that's why z is also going to be static clear yes sir okay now now let us do some uh, uh, now let us write some code and now let us try to print the value okay see uh, here i am creating one uh, static variable x with value 100 and here i am creating another in uh, non static variable with value 200 now if i want to access the static variable i can directly access like this now if i uh, execute this program then you will see that the x value is 100 is printed there now can i do the same thing uh, for the variable y can i print the variable y like uh, like this no you cannot you cannot print the y value like like this can I, anybody tell me why because it's not static and it should be taken by using creating instance of that class yes yes absolutely right because we cannot access the y value here because the memory memory is not allocated for this y value we are accessing the x value because the memory allocation is already done for the x value see as long as the memory is not allocated for any variable you cannot access this right for x the memory allocation is done but for y the memory allocation is not done as the memory allocation is not done for the variable y we cannot access the y variable right then the question is that sir when the memory is allocated for x variable when the memory is going to be allocated for the y variable see the point that you need to remember as soon as your class starts execution the static variables are initialized as soon as your program as, as soon as your class start execution 
the static variables are going to be in a slide. So from when you start, uh, so when you run this application, the application is going to start from the main method or not? So this main method is a part of this program class or not? And this static variable belonging to this program class or not? See, that means when it starts the main method execution, before executing this line of code, what he will do, he will allocate memory for this variable. Understand or not? Yes, sir. And it yes. will only uh, and it will allocate memory for the static variable only once during the lifetime of a program or lifetime of a class. For this program class, right? It will allocate memory for the static variable only once. Right? It will only allocate memory once for the static variable. As soon as your class start execution. Right, so how, how you will identify your class start execution? See, here I'm not creating any program, uh, any object of the program class. Rather, I'm just starting executing this main method. Once it starts the execution of main method, first responsibility, it will allocate the static variables method. Is there any static variable present in this class? Yes, there is some static variable. Just allocate the memory for that. Once the memory allocation is done, you can access the static variable directly. But we cannot access the non-static variable because the memory is not allocated for the non-static variable. Then when the memory is going to be allocated for the non-static variable, now when we create an instance of the class, then only the memory is going to be allocated for the non-static variable and for each instance. Right? If you are creating, a, once you creating an instance, then only it is going to allocate the memory for this uh, non-static variable then how to create an instance that, that we'll discuss in detail later but for now so what is the syntax now you have to write a program then you can give any name then using a new operator and the constructor of the class we are going to create the instance so this is nothing but your object creation statement right so when you use the new operator the responsibility of the new operator is to initialize or to the memory location right the new operator is going to provide or is going to allocate memory for the non static variable right then you will ask me sir what is the use of a constructor see here you have two things what will be the identity why uh, what id int y will do it will allocate if you look at my example right it will uh, so this int a means it will allocate some memory right uh, and provide a identity. The same thing, this what, what I'm showing you here, this thing is done by the new keyword. It will allocate some memory and it will give a identity to that memory. What is the identity? This one, right? Then what is the role of this program? Or you can say this is constructor. The role of a constructor is nothing but the second statement what I have shown you here. It will store the value into that memory location. That means here memory is allocation done and here the initialization of the variable is done, right? So you need to understand the two things. Both are not the same. Both are two different things. First of all, new is there to allocate the memory location and setting the identity. What is the role of this program? Program is there to initialize the data member, right? Initialize the data member means if you are initializing like this, so it will store 200 is there. And if you have not initialized this data member, and if you are simply putting integer y, it means it will initialize that y location with the default value of integer. What is the default value? The default value will be zero, right? So once you create the instance, then you will uh, access that instance like this. Now you can see, now observe. So here, what should be the y value it should print? It should print zero because we have not initialized this y member with any additional or external value. So what is the default value? Default value is zero. So it should print zero. Now, so it is printing zero or not? Now, instead of y, what I can do? I can uh, store some uh, data, let's say 200. So now, so in that particular memory location, when the constructor is executed, so it will check what is the is the y value is initialized with some value. Yes, it is initialized. Then whatever the value it is uh, is there, just put into that memory location. So in this case, it will store two hundred into this memory location, right? And when you say obj dot y, so whatever value is there in the y memory location, then it will print that value. So in this case, it is going to print 
200. Is that clear or not? Yes, sir. So now you understand what is the use of new and uh, what is the use of this construct. See, uh, going further, we are going to discuss constructor in detail. What is a constructor? How a constructor is executed? What are the different kinds of a constructor? Right? What is the role and responsibility of a constructor? What is constructor overloading? What is static constructor? What is private constructor? What is the constructor execution of order? Right? Uh, if we have parent-child relationship, then which constructor is going to execute first? Right? What are the state uh, as part of the constructor? Is it allowed to use uh, any modifier or it is allowed to use any access specifier? What are the statements as part of the constructor we can write and we cannot write? Everything we are going to discuss in detail in our constructor, right? If you look at the syllabus constructor, I think four or five sessions, uh, five chapters are there for constructor only. But for now, you just need to remember this new keyword is nothing but it is going to uh, initialize the memory location. And this program constructor is nothing but it is used to initialize the variable. This new uh, uh, when uh, the new uh, responsibility is based on the uh, data type. It will allocate memory and it will provide that identity to that data type, right? Uh, to that memory location. And when the constructor is executed, whatever value uh, it is uh, the variable is initialized with, it will put that value into that memory location, right? Is that clear or not? But this thing is not required in the case of a static variable. Why? Because static variables are automatically created. Only one time they are going to be created. When they are going to be created? When the class execution starts. And when the non-static variables are going to be created? Non-static variables are going to be created when we create an instance of the class and for each instance. Right? Is that clear or not? Yes. Okay. Right, and 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 if you try to access this without creating object, then what you will see? Okay, let's see. If I'm trying to access like this, then uh, let's see what error we are getting. See, an object reference is required for non-static field method and property. What it is saying that if you want to access a non-static field like y or non-static method or non-static property, right? What is method property? We are going to discuss in our coming session. But for now, if you want to access any non-static field, an object reference is required. Without object reference, we cannot access any non-static memoir. So how to create object reference? We can create object reference like this program. You can provide any name. Then using new and constructor, we can create the object reference. And using the object reference, we can use like this. So here, OBJ is nothing but it is a reference variable which pointing to this object, right? By using this object reference, we can access the non-static uh, variables, non-static uh, uh, fields, non-static non methods, non-static properties. Whatever the non-static members are there in your class, by using the object reference, or you can say simply object, or you can say instance, you can access them, right? Is that clear? Yes. Yes. Now, so the first point that you need to remember is while working with the starting and non-static variable, static members of a class does not require the instance of a class for initialization and execution. Does uh, uh, does the static member require the class uh, class instantiation? Is it required to create a, uh, create an instance or object of the class in order to access this X variable? No. So object is not required either for initializing or for accessing, right? So object is not required. The second point, what is saying? Okay, non-static, okay. Whereas non-static members of a class require an instance of a class for both initialization and execution. But if you want to initialize or if you want to access, then you need object, right? So when this statement is executed, it will provide the memory location. It will initialize the data member. And even uh, once after initialization, then if you want, then again, if you want to access them, then also you need the object, right? That means for object initialization and for object uh, accessing the data member, you need the object, right? But this is not required in the case of static variable. Is that clear at this point? Yes. Okay, now, now the question. When static and non-static variables are initialized in C sharp, right? 
it's where already we discussed static variables of a class are initialized immediately once the execution of the class start whereas non static variable or see whenever i am saying non static variable it is same as instance variable right non static variables alternative name is instance variable so if i am saying non static or if i am saying instance meaning is going to be same right see static variable initialized immediately once the class execution starts non static variable initialized only after creating the class instance as well as each and every time the instance of the class is created right what it means now when, whenever uh, your class execution start it is guaranteed that your static variable going to be initialized and it is going to it is guaranteed that they are going to be initialized only once but in the case of a non static variable it might be uh, possible that non static variables are initialized zero time if no instance is created and n number of times if n instance is created okay let us uh, let us understand can i, can I ask sure 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 uh, sir it means uh, static variables are uh, only initialized in uh, i mean uh, ram memory no yes yes whether it is static or whether it is non static right once you start the program execution they are going to be created inside the ram only it is also in uh, the, i mean uh, uh, static member variables are stored in uh, in main memory also no so this ram is nothing but your main memory na ram is the where we uh, run our program no sir actually yes yes see whenever i am running your see if you go to the uh, uh, if you go to open your task manager so you can see these applications are currently running right in yeah. my machine so this yeah. application or whatever data uh, uh, or whatever memory they want they can uh, access or they they want uh, for accessing or for executing this the memory is going to be allocated in the ram so what the uh, memory uh, what the memory it is showing here it is nothing but your ram yes sir right so you can see uh, this cpu memory so this memory is nothing but your ram only so this 8 gb or 11 out of 11.8 gb 8 gb are used right so this is your ram memory so whenever let's say if you are storing a file permanently on your hard disk that is going to be your hard drive or hard disk right but if you are performing some application if you want to execute see currently uh, uh, i'm not executing this code right you can see nothing is there but once i start executing this application so what is the my, what is my project name types of variables right let's see yes. i start executing this application then immediately you will see that that exe file is loaded here types of variables this loaded, this is loaded inside the computer ram memory only if it is loaded into the computer ram memory only or you can say primary memory right or you can say main memory then whatever variables i am going to be created as part of this program they are also going to be created inside this ram memory only right once your program start execution and once the the uh, uh, it, it, once you start the execution static variables are created guaranteed right they will occupy uh, some memory inside this uh, ram right but non static they might be created zero times or they might be created uh, n number of times but if they are going to be created they are also going to be created inside ram memory again going further i will discuss what is the use of a stack memory what is the use of a heap memory if you are creating a static variable where it is going to be created if you are going to create, uh, create a non static uh, uh, non static variable then where this non static memory is going to be allocated right those yes. things we are going to be discussed in our upcoming session but okay. for now just uh, uh, focus on if you are creating some data uh, if you are creating some variables in your program then those are going to be created uh, dynamically at run time inside the computer ram memory only and the once you stop your program application then whatever the memory uh, uh, or whatever the memory allocated for this uh, program or whatever the memory allocated for the variables that are present as part of this program once you stop then those are going to be destroyed from the ram memory okay see currently yeah. you can see this one because currently my application is running so as the my application is running this memory is allocated inside the ram now observe i stopped my application right as soon as i stop my application you will see that that ex is not there that means whatever the memory is allocated that is also going to be deleted yes sir clear clear now yes sir okay and as i said 
once you uh, once your program execution start the static memory uh, static if there is some static variable the memory is going to be initialized automatically and that is guaranteed and that is guaranteed to be initialized only once but in case of a non static memory see now see now i i have commented this then how many non static variable uh, is, is the non static memory allocation will be there once i start executing this program no the non static memory will not be allocated the memory will not be allocated for this integer variable why because because we are not creating any instance right see uh, at this time if you run this application you will get this value but at this time the memory is only allocated for this variable understand or not the memory will not allocated for this now yes uh, now let's try to uh, uncomment this one right now once i execute this program then memory will be allocated for this one and uh, memory will also be allocated for this one because we are creating an instance of the program class once we once this statement is executed memory will be allocated for this variable right so you can see memory is allocated for this one right now again if i am on commenting this one then once i start executing the application memory will be allocated for this in, uh, integer variable right uh, give me one minute right so in this case uh, the static variable is going to be initialized only once and this non static variable is going to be initialized twice two times this variable is going to be initialized why because we are creating the instance two times for each instance the non static variables is going to be initialized right for better understanding have a look at this diagram so uh, when your class execution start this x variable memory will allocated and it will store the value y when you create the first instance the y memory allocation will be there and when you create the second instance again the y memory allocation will be there hello hello? hello hello yeah yeah ask me so sir like my question is like like in this case like both object 1 and object 2 like they point to the same memory location or different Uh, different memory location obviously this is the memory location for obj1 and this is the memory location for obj2 so this uh, sir so whatever the square bracket it is a memory location and it is another memory location for obj1 there is a separate memory location where y is stored for obj2 there is another memory location where y is stored that means there are two copies of the y variable available in the memory. okay sir right yes so now uh, you will see one thing initializing non static variable through class construct right as i told you so uh, in this case this is nothing but your constructor right and in this case if i am executing the program two times then you will see that both both the time the object is created the y value is going to be same yes or no in this case the y value is going to 200 and 200 both the times the y value is going to be same or not Yes, so y value is going to be same. So when you are working with non-static variable, then there is a chance you can initialize the non-static variable through the class constructor, right? Let let us understand this example, right? So this is your static variable, right? This is your non-static variable, and this is nothing but your class constructor. So what is a constructor? We will discuss later. But for now, constructor is a special mem uh, method or member function of a class that is going to be executed automatically whenever you create an instance of that class. So the constructor name should be same as the class name. And the, you can see the constructor name is same as the class name, and there should not be any return type. You can see I have not written integer void or anything as the return type. You can create a public constructor or a private constructor. That that doesn't matter, right? We'll discuss what is the difference between them in going further. But now I'm just creating a public constructor. The constructor name is same as the class name, right? The class name and this constructor. So you can treat this constructor as a 
function. As a function, it can accept any number of parameters. Currently, I'm passing one parameter. And whatever parameter I'm passing, I'm initializing that parameter value with the non-static variable. Is that clear? Yes, yeah. So oh, in our upcoming session, we'll discuss in detail constructor. But for now, uh, you just have to remember it is a function whose name is same as the class name, right? And the main role and responsibility of a constructor is to initialize the non-static data vectors. See, in our in our example, y is a non-static data vector. So I'm initializing that y with the incoming value. So while I'm creating the object. I need to pass a value to this A variable and whatever value I am passing, that value will be stored in the Y variable. See, so it, it, this is nothing but our first object creation statement. What value I am passing here? 300. Then 300 will be sit in which variable? In the A variable. And this 300 will assign to which variable? Y variable. What is Y? Y is a non-static variable. In this case, 400 is there. So this 400 value will become to this A variable and this 400 variable will ascend to this Y variable, right? That means in this case, two objects are created. That means two copies of the Y variable will be available. One of the copy will hold 300 and one of the copy will hold 400. Clear? Okay. Let, let, let us see this uh, by debugging mode. See. Uh, I just put a debugger point, you know how to put, so you can just right click and uh, put a breakpoint, right? Or uh, even uh, other ways, you just need to click, right click here, it will put a debugger point, right? And one, let's start. So I just start the program execution and one start at the debugger point will hit. Now I will uh, execute the statement by statement and I will check you, right? I also put another debugger point in my program class constructor, right? That means if this program, that means I need to prove one point. Now, when this thing is going to be executed, it means it is a, uh, uh, that means it is a method call. So this method is nothing but this method. And I'm calling this method using 300. That means at this statement, if the controller moved to this particular location, then I will prove that. Uh, what I will prove that now, when I'm creating the object, the constructor is going to be executed, right? So uh, if you want to actually, uh, debug the uh, statement line by line, so you need to enter function plus F10 key. So I'm uh, 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 executing function F10 key. Like, see, this statement is executed. Once this statement uh, line number 17 is executed, you will see that X value is there. X value is 100 in the output or not because this statement execution is completed. Now, now when I uh, press F10, then it's the controller should move that controller means you can observe this arrow symbol. It should go from this location to this location. If uh, our understanding is right, right? Right? Function F10, right? The controller is come to this location or not. And if you move the mouse pointer over the A variable, then you will see that what is there in A? 300, right? You can see in A, the value is 300. From where you get the value? Now here we are passing 300. Whatever value we are passing, that will be come to this A variable. Now, now if I now if I press F10 once more, once more and once more, right? The, this method execution completed. Once this method execution con, uh, completed, the controller should come back to this point only because from here we are calling this method. Method execution completed means the controller again come back to this point only. Okay. Let uh, press F10 once more. Yeah, controller come back to this statement or not? That means this part of execution is completed. So the memory allocation is done by new keyword and the object initialization is done by this constructor, right? Now you can move to next line, see. Once you move to this line, then you can also see what are the things available as part of OBJ1. Now, now I just move over the OBJ1 and you can see there is one array. So if I, Click on that array, you can see Y variable is there and the value is 300. That means for this OBJ1, Y is there and the value is 300. Now come to the memory location. For OBJ1, Y is there, value is 300 or not? What, what I'm showing in diagram for OBJ1, this is exactly the same thing here also, here or no? Right. And if you want to see non, if you want to see static member, value x is 100 there. But this is not a part of our concern because they are going to be created only once. Right. But for this y, 
we have 300 and this opj1 is the object right now if i execute this statement again the controller will move to this particular location right let's prove this function f10 yeah controller come to this point or not and here you can see a is 400 right just uh, once the method execution completed this f10 then it will again come back to this point that means at this point the this statement is executed currently if you look this obj2 is null why because once uh, this statement execution is completed but yet we have not assigned that reference to this obj2 variable so once we execute uh, the f10 then it will uh, assign that reference to this obj2 variable now if you look to the obj2 variable then you will see that y is 400 that means for this obj1 y is 300 for this obj2 y is 400 that means this y having two different memory location or not two different value or not but for the static variable it is x100 and for this obj1 if you uh, look at the static then it is also having x100 that means if you look at the memory location then you will get a better idea for x there is only one copy available because it is a static variable for y as we have created two object or two instances of the program class so two copies of the y variable will be available one copy storing the value 300 and another copy storing the value 400 is that clear is yes that... yes sir yeah now now if you uh, see see for x value 100 obj y value 300 obj 2 y value is 400 now now you might be one question sir is it uh, sir is it possible to initialize the static variable through the class constructor yes or no so currently we are initializing the y value y is a non-static variable is it possible to initialize this x variable value through the constructor yes absolutely possible right that let's that also see right okay now now you can see uh this is my constructor this is taking one integer variable i'm assigning that value to the y variable as well as to the x variable that means initializing the non-static variable with the incoming a value and initializing the static variable with the incoming a value then what will happen in this case now in this case when the program execution start it will create the x variable with the value 100 so the first statement when i print the x value it will print 100 and at this time the object uh, will be created see okay see so first it will store 100 right then the object is created when the object when the first object is created so what he will do he will create the y variable and he will also override the x variable you will create the y variable with the uh, 300 and he will override the x variable with the value 300 that means when the first object is created object one this memory location will be created with y value as a 300 right but then it will override the x value so what is previously there 100 he will override that 100 value with the 300 value right now so at this time if you print the x value say so x will give you 300 now now for this object right again we are creating the object and at this time it will initialize the a value with a, what value 400 and again and here it will override the x value with 400 now if you execute this statement okay now if you execute uh, the, the second instance when the second instance is created so y uh, variable will be created with 400 but it will override the x value with 400 why now because x is not specific to obj1 or obj2 it is specific to a class right so it is specific to a class it is going to be created only once if it is specific to obj1 then x should be there with value 300 if, it, if x is specific to obj2 then it should be there with the value 400 but it is a single value it is a single memory location that's why every time we are changing the value it will not creating that uh, x variable here rather it will update that uh, value here right why because it is only created only once during the lifetime of a class now now if you execute this program then you will see that here x value will be 100 second time once the first object is created x value will be 300 third time when the uh, x uh, uh, second object is created and while printing the x value third time it will print the value 400 let's uh, run this 
see for x first it will print uh, see the, the first x value means before creating any instance before creating any instance uh, the uh, initial x value is 100 that is what you can see first then obj1 is created so when the obj1 is created y is created and x is override and y is created with value 300 and x is override with the value 300 so you can see 300 300 here right and when the second object is created y is initialized with 400 and x is override with 400 i'm saying initialize and i'm saying override so you have to understand this too so obj2 is 400 and x is 400 is that clear hello yes sir yes sir yes sir so the point that you need to remember is if you are initializing the static variable through a constructor then each uh, then each time then each time the constructor is executed it will override the existing value of the static variable so in general we never initialize the static variable through a constructor if at all you want to initialize the variable through a constructor then make that variable as non static is that clear? Hello? 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 Yes. Sir. Okay, so actually I am my Wi-Fi connection dropout. That's why there is some distance, right? So I just read this uh, simple, uh, statement, right? If at all you want to initialize through constructor, then you should initialize only the non-static variables because static variables are not specific to object right they are going to be created only once then that means they should not be uh, initialized through the class constructor if you initialize then every time your uh, constructor is executed they are going to be overridden right now then now uh, what is the difference between static and non-static so we already discussed in the case of instance variable uh, whenever i'm saying instance you need to understand this is also non-static, right? Each object will have its own copy, whereas we can only have one copy of a static variable irrespective of how many objects we created, right? In this example, you can see the non-static variable having one copy, right? If you are creating two objects, then two copies, but a single copy is available for the X variable, right? Changes made to the instance variable using one object will not reflect in other object as each object adds to one copy. In case of a static variable, changes made in one object will reflect in other object, right? You can see if I'm doing some changes using this object, right? Then that will uh, only reflect to this one. It will not reflect to this one. Let us prove this. So currently here we are printing obj1. Now I'm changing obj1 dot uh, y right obj1 dot y2 some 600 value and here after this execution you will see that okay not here okay then you will see that this obj1 value is only going to be this see See, here I'm changing the Y value of which object OBJ1 to 600. Then in this printing statement, you will see that this OBJ Y value will only be modified. This value will not be modified. Let's run this application. Okay, see, OBJ Y value is 600, OBJ2 uh, Y value is going to be 400. That means changes made in one object will not reflect to other object. Is that clear this point? So changes made it to instance variable using one object will not reflect to other objects, right? As each object having its own copy. In case of a static variable, changes made in one object will be reflected that we already discussed. So in object one, if we are doing some changes to the constructor, then the changes will be applicable, right? Then we can access the instance variable through object reference, whereas static variable can be accessed directly by using the class type. See, here we are accessing the uh, instance variable directly because uh, this we are accessing this variable inside this class, right? From outside the class, you can also access the uh, static variable using the class name. See, here I'm accessing the class name. It is also going to be work, right? So the point that you need to remember, 
you can access the static variable uh, directly if uh, if you are accessing uh, inside the same class and from outside you can access through the class so like this right in the life cycle of a class static variable is initialized only once whereas instance variable are initialized for zero times if no instance is created and n times if n number of instance are created so in this case right see if i'm commenting these two lines right that means when i execute this program the static variable will be created once but non static variable is not going to be created because we have not uh, created an instance if you create one instance then one copy of the non static variable is going to be created if i create another instance then another instance or another copy of the y variable is going to be created is that clear zero times or n times is that clear yes sir okay okay now instance variables go throughout the class except the static method the lifetime of a variable until the object is available in the memory right so how long the instance variable is going to be there on as long as the object is there right for example okay uh, right so what i'm doing here so see what i'm doing i'm making obj1 equals to null right so once i make obj1 equals to null then i'm trying to access this right so in this case what will happen now at this time the object is created right and in this statement the object is destroyed destroyed see object is destroyed means what now the whatever the reference variable is created those are also destroyed not exactly at this time but those are destroyed right so once the uh, reference variable is destroyed then if you try to access you cannot access it you will get some error let's see so you are getting some error or not right because the lifetime of an object is what now the lifetime of an object is until the object is available in the memory right in this statement the object is destroyed once the object is destroyed that means no um, uh, uh, the memory will be destroyed for that particular object right then once the memory is destroyed for that obj1 then you cannot access this y now you understood or not yes or no yes sir yes sir yes so static variable throughout the class until the end of the program so static variable means you can access static variable here you can even access static variable here also so when the static variable is created when you start the application when the static variable is going to be destroyed so i start the application the static variable created okay let me comment this statement this is not required okay so as soon as i start the application the static variable is created and as soon as i close so when i am closing this application the static variable is going to be destroyed right so the until the end of the program is that clear what is the difference between static and a, a non static yes sir okay yes so, uh, constant next important variable is constant see if you declare a variable using a const keyword then it is said to be a constant variable and the value of the constant variable cannot be modified once after its declaration so it is mandatory to initialize the constant variable at the time of its declaration point okay let us understand this okay see see this is a constant so if you want to create a constant variable then you need to use the const keyword and it is mandatory to initialize the constant variable at the time of its declaration right but here i am not initialize immediately i am getting an error or not a const field requires a value provided why it is mandatory it is mandatory because 
once the initialization is once the declaration is done you cannot modify this table if you try to modify then you will get error here pi is 3.14 right if i try to modify this value 3.17 f i will get an error so what is saying the left hand side of an assignment must be a variable property or index what is there in the left hand side it must be a variable or a property or a indexer but in this case it is variable but of type what constant so it cannot modify it's like right so constant means you need to initialize the variable at the time of its declaration only once you declare the variable you cannot modify the value of the variable right is that clear yes so yes, and how yes, will how you will create a constant you will create a constant by using the const keyword can anybody tell me why i am using uh, f here float or float value yeah. if i am not using float then what will be the default one if i remove float then decimal sorry double so, double only so default uh, for any floating point number is double right yeah, if you want to represent this as a decimal you need to write m so once you write m then you will see that you cannot convert a decimal to float and if you want to type f or small f or capital f then it will become a floating point number that clear or not yes or no yes sir yeah yeah yes sir okay. now okay now let us write this code see here i am accessing the x value and here i am accessing the p value and please remember i can access the p value directly without creating an instance i will show, i will tell you why the p value i can access directly you can see p i will be equals to 3.14 and without creating the instance i can access now can anybody tell me this behavior is similar to static variable or non static variable the behavior of a constant variable is it similar static. to static or non -static? static 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 why because it's been, it's been it's been it's been defined somewhere directly. yes or no we are accessing directly then then you might be have one question sir if the behavior of const variable is similar to static then why we are using const variable we can use the static variable now then can anybody tell me what is the difference as of now what we observe like for so static, static variable, variable can be modified exactly so if you have one static variable then you can modify the static variable but if you have a constant variable then you cannot modify the constant variable the behavior of constant variable is similar to the behavior of uh, behavior of static variable that means when the class execution start the variable is going to be created and the variable is going to be created only one one time during the lifetime of a program right and the second thing you can modify the static variable value but you cannot modify the const variable value so if someone ask you what is the difference between a static variable and a const variable then you need to tell that the behavior of a const and the static are going to be same that means without creating an instance we can access them they are going to be created only once during the lifetime of their uh, of a class but the only one and the only difference between them is that we cannot modify the constant variable value after its declaration after its declaration declaration initialization two different things after its declaration you cannot uh, modify the value but you can modify the static variable value is that clear yes sir yes sir okay yes. So the behavior of a constant variable is similar to the behavior of static variable that is initialized one and only one time in the life cycle of a class and does not require an instance of a class for either initialization and execution right this is the example see for obj1 one copy of memory for obj2 another copy of a memory that means for obj1 and obj2 y is separate for x it is only one copy for pi it is only one copy now if someone ask you the difference between static and constant variable we have already discussed right we cannot modify we can modify the static variable value but we cannot modify the constant variable value right so that is what we have already seen see here uh, we, we are able to modify the static variable value but we cannot modify this constant variable value is that clear
Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now there is another kind of a variable which is the read only, right? Okay. Let me show you directly with an example. See, whenever you create a variable using the read only modifier, then it is said to be a read only variable. And once you initialize the read only variable, then you cannot modify the value of the variable. Previously, in constant, I'm saying at the time you need to initialize at the time of its declaration. And once it's declaration, you cannot modify the value. But this is not the same in the case of a read only, right? The declaration and the initialization might be different, right? It is not mandatory to uh, initialize the read only variable at the time of its declaration. If you declare it, it's well and fine. But if you are not declaring it, then it is also well and fine. Even uh, for the read only variable, you can initialize. If you want to initialize, you can initialize through the class constructor, right? You cannot initialize from other places. You can initialize only, see, here you can initialize like this. This is well and fine, right? Even if you want, then you can also initialize that Z variable from here also. Or whatever the value it is taking, you can also initialize it like this, right? See, so if you are not initializing, then also it is going to be initialized by the constructor, right? So the point that you need to remember is the read only variable behavior is similar to static variables. The read only behavior is similar to, sorry, the read only behavior is similar to non static variables, right? Non static variables means they are going to be created only when the instance is going to be created. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Then you can, uh, the difference is that you can modify the read only variable anywhere. Sorry, you cannot. Uh, uh, you can modify the non-static variable from anywhere, but you cannot modify this variable, right? So, see, uh, here you can observe. So, uh, I'm creating the two instances. That means for each instance, this Y value is going to be created. Again, this Z value is also going to be created, right? And at this point, we have not initial, initialized this read-only variable. The, if we are not initialized, then what is the default value? Default value is zero. So this read only variable is initialized with the zero value. Let's run this application. See, we are getting Y value as 300, Z value as zero. Y value as 400, Z value as zero. That means the read only variable behavior is similar to the non-static variables behavior. And, and one more thing, you can initialize the read only variables through the class constructor. Okay, let's see this. Right here, you can see uh, I have uh, having two uh, variables, and uh, I'm initializing these two variables using the class constructor. Right, so I'm initializing y and I'm initializing z, and you can see z is a read only variable. So you can initialize a read only variable directly here, and if you are not initializing here, you can also initialize through the constructor. Now I'm creating the constructor. Right, while I'm creating the constructor, I'm passing some value for uh, y value as well as for z value. Now, if I run this application, you will see this uh, for ob object one, z value is 45, for object two, z value is 55. That means the read only variables are created uh, specific to object only. That means the number of objects you have, the number of copies for the read only variable you have. If you are creating the object for zero times, then read only variable will be created zero times. If you are creating the instance, n number of times, then the read, will, uh, read only value will be created for n number of times. Now, you can see, so this is obj1 and this is obj2. So x is created only one time, p is created only one time because x and p, the behavior is static. Here you can say y is created two times and z is created two times because here y and z behavior are similar to non-static, right? So read only behavior, is similar to non-static and the constant behavior is similar to static. As it is non-static, as the a behavior of a read-only variable is non-static, they are going to be created for objects, right? For each instance, 
a copy of the read only variable will be available so you can see for obj1 the read only variable z is available a copy of the z is available for obj2 a copy of the z is also available right now now the most important question that you might be asked sir what is the difference between read only and non static if both are having the same behavior then what is the difference between them right can anybody tell me what is the difference between this uh, uh, y and z sir y can be modified but not z uh but not for z means uh, you can modify the z value only through the constructor right yes sir but apart from but not after much you cannot modify from anywhere else right if you yes, try to modify here see uh, okay uh, let me show you see obj1 dot y i can modify to some value right but obj2 dot z z is accessible but you cannot modify the field, right if you try to modify then you will see one error a read only field cannot be assigned right expect except in a constructor or in this only setter or the type in which the field is defined or variable initialized that means you can only initialize a read only variable through the initializer or through the constructor so this is nothing but initializer so while you are declaring the variable you can initialize the read only variable or you can initialize the read only variable through the constructor apart from these two places you cannot initialize the read only variable this is what he is saying in the error process. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Right. So you can see well, I have already provided that uh, document also. Then what is the difference between a constant and read only variable? Can anybody tell me? What is the difference between constant and read only variable? Sir, constant we can't modify, sir. But read only we can modify with the help of constructor. Uh, no, wrong, wrong. Constant you can't modify, no? Uh, Constant, can, constant must declare, sir, but main, initialize while it uh, while we're declaring the constant with a variable. The first difference is that while declaring the constant, you have to initialize the value. But it is not mandatory in the case of a read only. Read only can be initialized in two ways using the read only initializer. That means at the time of a declaration, you can initialize or even you can initialize it through the class constructor. This is the first difference. Second is you cannot modify the value, right? Whether it is a constant or whether it is a read only, you cannot modify the value, right? The main difference is that constant is going to be created only one, one time, but read only, it might be created zero time. If zero object is created or n time, if n number of object is created. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? So the difference constant and read only variable is that constant is a fixed value for a whole class. Whereas a read only is a fixed value specific to an instance of class and for each instance, right? Now, now, yeah. If you go to the internet, then you will find another category of variable which is a local variable, right? So local variables means what? Now the local variable are de uh, declared inside the method of a class, right? Okay. Uh, let me give you the example directly so that you can understand. Already I explained this thing, but let me give another example. So, so this is a method and this is another method. So inside a method, if you declare any variable, then it will be treated as a local variable, right? Previously we discussed, so previously what we discussed, we discussed like this, integer x equals to 10, static, integer y equals to 20, we discussed const uh, float y equals to 3.14, f, and we discussed read only integer z equals to some value right so these are declared as part of the class so directly you are declaring this class but here you are declaring the variable inside a method right whenever you declare a variable inside a method and if your method is taking some parameters like like this then these are nothing but your local value this is a parameter this is a uh, variable or not. So this y, this y, or this x, these are nothing but your local variable. And by default, the type. So this local variable type is basically depend on the block or method type, right? You can see 
this method is a static block. That means whatever variable I am going to be declared or whatever variable uh, this method taking as a parameter, all are going to be static only. And see, this is a non-static block. So whatever variable I'm declaring, uh, uh, I'm declaring here, or whatever variables this uh, method taking as a parameter, all are going to be non-static only because the variable, the local, the variable which is declared inside a method body, it might be a block, it might be a constructor, it might right, or it might be a function. If a variable declared inside a block, then it is going to be a local variable. Right. And the type is basically depend on type of the block. Right. If the block is non static, then the variable is going to be non static. If the block is static, the variable is going to be static. But uh, this doesn't matter at all because this variable is going to be created. Uh, see, if this is a static variable, static block, right, this variable is not going to be created as soon as your class starts. Right. This is a static block. And this is a static variable, but this variable is not going to be created as soon as your class starts. But when you uh, execute your class, this static variable is going to be created, but not this one. Then when this variable is going to be created, when you invoke this method, right? If he, you are invoking this method, right? Suppose you are invoking this method like here from this place, right? If this, once you invoke this method, then the execution will start. Uh, then the controller will come to this place when this statement is executed this memory uh, the memory for this y variable is going to be allocated if at all you are not calling this method that means this function block is not going to be executed if this method is not going to be executed then that means this variable is not going to be created similarly if you call this method then only if this statement is executed why i'm saying if this statement is going to be executed for example if I'm writing something, uh, if one uh, is greater than 10, right, 20. And if as part of this statement, if I'm writing something like this, right, I uh, uh, something like this, uh, okay, this here is there. Okay. If I'm writing something like this, then this statement, uh, even you call this method, this statement is not going to be created or executed. If this statement is not executed means the variable for the Z is not going to be uh, the memory for the Z variable is not going to be allocated because we know one is not uh, one is not greater than 20. That means this condition is false. If this condition is false, this block of statement is not going to be executed. Right. Once the block of statement is not going to be executed means this statement is not executed. If this statement is not executed means the memory allocation for the Z variable is not going to be there. You understood or not? Sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. And that, that means the variable which is created inside a block, this is a block or inside a method are going to be local variable and there is no guarantee that the memory will be allocated for them. Right. And the scope is and, the, uh, and see once the variable is created, once it end, uh, once it end the block, then the variable is also going to be deleted automatically, right? For example, okay. For example, once you start execution of this method, this mem the memory for this variable will be allocated. Once you complete the execution and you will come back, then the memory which is allocated for this block is also going to be deleted. The scope is limited to this method only. That means the allocation, uh, uh, the memory allocation will be done and it will be destroyed once the uh, block uh, completes its execution. And the scope is limited to this method. That means you cannot access this X variable here, right? Or you cannot access this Y variable here. You can access this variable only within uh,